The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Welcome to a pretty fucking cool episode of probably a podcast in South Africa. Hello, I'm also here. James, James. is also here. I'm back. He's back on the pod, um, basically because I forced him. We definitely have neighbors who are probably thinking we're literal fucking psychopaths right now, but it's okay. No, I think it's pretty normal setting up a podcast on a rooftop pool with... With all the indoor furniture. <laughs> I literally made James drag all this furniture out here, and I was like, we have to make this work. Also, it took a long time to get set up. Shouts out to producer Courtney, who is still somehow running my life for me and helping me with everything all the way back in America and FaceTiming her like, does this work? Is this okay? I'm sure somehow I'll still fuck it up. But regardless, we're, we're trying. We're giving it a good college try. And if only audio works on this and you guys don't end up getting a video, many apologies. But we're using a, a GoPro and we'll just have to see. You guys are already having hella technical difficulties. And I can say <laughs> that because I'm doing this all myself. It's worth it for the view. So make sure you check out the video. Yeah, review check out the video. it's insane. For fuck's sake. I can't... <laughs> But no, I was just saying, toothpicks, you, I, I, I'm surprised you haven't taken more of them at dinner time. They keep offering them and I'm there picking my teeth with them and you're just walking around with coriander and... <laughs> so coriander is cilantro. 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 Thank you, babe. That is so sweet. I'll, I'll consider getting a no, toothpick. But, no, but I'll always tell you if you've got stuff in your teeth. You do and I do appreciate that because I don't want to be looking crazy. No, you know when you go to parties and you've got stuff in your teeth and you come home and you're like what i've had that in my teeth for three hours yeah i will always veneers do attract more stuff in your teeth they i do. think um also something that happened when i first got here i don't know if you guys can tell from my voice but i had a bit of a sinus issue which does happen to me a if, bit <clears throat> <clears throat> which does happen to me if i am like one traveling a lot or two i think it's like an altitude thing for me usually once a year i have a sinus issue but drugs are like super easy to get in south africa <laughs> I basically knew it was happening and I was like, oh my God, if I was home right now, my doctor would give me a steroid and I would be right as rain because it would cut out the sinus issue. Well, I just like walked into a pharmacy here called Clicks, and they were like, yeah. So they use Rand here at South African Rand. We obviously use dollars. When I did the math, it was like a $20 doctor visit and the medicine was $4. It's and just it was nuts. If you've, if you've got cash, if you've got money, you can get away with a lot here. Yeah, it's kind of crazy and corrupt, but I loved it for the medicine aspect. Great. I think. <clears throat> do you know what though? I think. Mo I think more countries should should offer this kind of service. <laughs> it was if, very if, easy. If you wave a bit of cash around, they're like, "Sure, what medicines you want?" Obviously, within parameters. Okay, James, I'm not sure that's exactly <laughs> the route that other countries should be taking. I'm all taking. for it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, no, but but it was um, in America that would have been an act of Congress. That would have been like, I have a sinus infection. They would have been like, prove it. And I would have been like, yeah, okay, fine. But in England, the NHS, you would have probably had to wait four or five hours to go and see a doctor in the Same first place, who then goes away and decides whether you should get it, and then you wait another two days, and by that time your body's basically healed by itself anyway yeah in america it would have just taken the process would have been a lot longer it took like 20 minutes here in south africa yeah. and i sent my picture a friend of <laughs> i sent my friend a picture of the medicine the steroids and she's like yeah that's great that's exactly what you should be taking and i was like perfect anyways i'm coming off of this little sinus thing but i sound a little sniffly and wheezy so we're just gonna bear with me okay so we're gonna take you back to the beginning packing Boom. If you're a subscriber to my Instagram, I'm making the packing videos today and they're going to be iconic. But let me tell you, I thought I was as so smart. I was like, you are the smartest bitch alive. I was calling people being like, do you know who's smart? Me. Call my mom. What a smart daughter you have. Me. Thinking to myself, I know I'm going to London, okay, for five days after Cape Town. It is beautiful and summery here. Iconic. However, it is not that in London by the time we get there. It'll be very cold and it's like mid-December in London. So I didn't want to pack all my winter stuff to go to Cape Town. And anyways, it was like a lot of packing. So I was like, I'm going to ship it to London, the winter stuff, and it'll be at his house when I get there. Okay, so I lug, I'm in New York. It also fucking cold at this point. I, I'm just lugging all of these clothes because you can't. I, it was too close to drive to it was the whole thing like you just got to walk in new york and so i'm lugging them to fedex the guy's like yeah here's a box i go back i put the box i fill the box with the clothes i make sure it's not too heavy it was about 10 pounds i get there i walk all the way back it was fucking so windy and um get there with the box clothes shoes everything packaged perfectly packed perfectly um and he's like are you sure you need to send this to london and i was like my guy <laughs> why are you asking me that yes i'm sure i'm here i've done this yes yes i'm sure i have to send this he's like okay well the cheapest way to send it is 700 dollars, and i was like it was like 600 and you know 96 dollars and i was like are 
it doesn't have to get there anytime soon. He's like the cheapest way. So apparently international shipping is just ridiculous right now. How much did it weigh? Like 10 pounds. That's not a lot, is it? No, 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 no. He said it was, because I was like, can I take something out to make it lighter? And he was like, no, it's not a weight issue. He was like, it would be this if you were shipping something. It's just insane. And I was like, what the fuck? So anyways, the packing was not as iconic. Um, The packing video that I'll make actually won't be like, showing what I packed for the safari because obviously I've been gone for like a month so most people aren't traveling places for a month so you don't need a video explaining to you how to pack and travel for a month but yeah I thought I was really smart with that and that did not work um that was a nightmare but okay next came my actual flight to South Africa okay James was already here how was that it was a lot you know I knew it would be a lot regardless wherever you travel wherever you go there's always something eventful that happens to you yeah, that's why I'm scared about flying home with you. Yeah, you something, but something's gonna happen. No, we flew. A couple There's gonna times be some today. witch on the plane who starts trying to. You know, Anna Grace. Mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be lovely. <laughs> okay, so the trip. I found out when I was in the airport. I know you know, guys. I've mentioned this a couple times. I'm trying to be better about my money and not just frivolously toss it around. And I almost really said fuck that and just did something very like absolutely re- like reckless because I found out when I was in the airport about to fly from. So my route was New York to London, an all day layover in London, and then London to Cape Town, two overnight flights. And then someone messaged me on Instagram. If you're listening to this and you messaged me on Instagram, I appreciate the knowledge, but you also ruined my fucking day because you were like, wait, girl, why aren't you just taking the direct nonstop flight from Newark to uh, Cape Town? Like there's a direct flight from Newark to Cape Town. And I was like, no, there's obviously not because my mom, who's a travel agent who helped me book this would obviously know that. By the way, the direct flight was 18 hours. One of my flights alone was 13 hours. The other one was eight hours. So wait, sorry, a direct flight, 18 hours. Can you, can a plane fly that long? It was, it wasn't 18 hours. Actually, it was like no. 15 hours. Yeah. I, I, I think the max is I'm no plane expert, but I think, I don't think you can fly 18 hours. I think it was 15 hours. Mm, I think that's the max. It was something crazy in comparison to what I was adding together. I was like, I will absolutely do that. Unless direct. they just paraglide the rest of the trip. <laughs> so I was like, there's no possible way because my mom would have told me that. So I look it up. Oh, there's a way. It is a newer flight. So my mom wasn't, I'm sure, sure, like aware of it. But yeah, it, it is a nonstop flight from New York to Cape Town, 15 hours. And I call my mom was not mean, was not a brat, but I was like, did you, did you know about this? She's like, that's not a thing. And I was like, it is. And she goes, oh my gosh, I did not know that. But listen, it was so expensive, but I almost switched to it. And then I was like, you can't, that's just, I would have lose my money from the first flight, paid extra for that one. Also, you love London. I didn't love sitting in the London airport for well, you nine sent hours. Well, you sent me a video of where you were showering. I that guess was that's how, cool. bored, how bored you were. Yeah, I was honestly so bored. Yeah, but you text me and you're like, I love seeing what you're up to. I do, that's true. Do you actually? I thought you were being sarcastic. Well, I kind of do, but I also, the inside of a Virgin Atlantic lounge shower room isn't kind of what I meant by that, but I just was kind of saying it to make you feel better about your layover. Okay. There's the truth. So we're lying to each other when we're in stress. It's called a white lie. I think they're sometimes necessary in life. That was nice because it did cheer me up when I was there. And now you know the real truth. You did And it wasn't that bad a lie, so... Actually, it worked out well. You were chilling in Cape Town, in sunny Cape Town, and him and his best friend Angus were just like vibing and having the time of their lives. Because I flew, by the way, I flew on a Friday and a Saturday and I landed on a Sunday. So the whole time I'm just like in airports and on planes. He's just like, woo, babe, yeah. Cape Town's <laughs> so fun. It's mental out here. And I was like, sick. I love the lounge. Check out these showers. Um, yeah, so that was how I got. Okay, so then I got here. Oh, I do need to bring <sighs> this up. And you can you can comment on this too. I think you might think I'm being a little dramatic, but this is you dramatic. Oh, don't bitch. Okay, I, this we were originally gonna have me do the first half of the podcast with myself, and then James was gonna join in. So this was originally supposed to be like a little like me moment with the podcast, and I was gonna like bear my heart on my sleeve. But you can be a part of it. But you know, if you think I'm dramatic, just be nice, okay? Because these are my actual feelings. Okay. Okay. Well, with holidays coming up, we know exactly what that means. Stress. I know, we all wish for holidays to be exactly what they're meant for, a vacation. But honestly, we all know nine times out of ten, they ain't. Between shopping for gifts, conversations at the dinner table that you don't feel like having, or the dreaded uncle who just won't shut up. I know I can speak for others when I say I just need to mellow out. So what do I reach for? Dad grass. And no, I don't mean my father's actual grass, although he does actually always have that on hand. I'm talking about the brand of CBD pre-rolled joints by a company that I am now obsessed with, Dadgrass. The thing about Dadgrass is it doesn't get you too high. 
like, when did we shift to this world where the only weed that we can get our hands on sends us to the damn moon? Me personally, I hate being too high. I feel like tons of people listening to this podcast have had a similar situation or can recall a time where they just got way too high and it's miserable. I legit started being afraid to smoke because weed is just too dangerous of a game for me. But that's what I love about dadgrass. They are reviving the pleasure of the casual smoke so we can just chill. And also if you aren't into smoking, they've got tinctures, which is like this nice little drop situation or fast acting gummies. Oh, and also how cool is this? They even have a CBD dog bone option for your favorite little furry friends, which is great because I'd be knowing a lot of people with a lot of anxious pups, especially around the holidays when they're traveling to and fro all over to different houses. So tis the season to indulge without getting so high that you go to the freaking moon. It's 100% legal, organic pre-rolled CBD hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind very low in THC and high in CBD so that you can enjoy the effects while still maintaining a clear head. Chill out without getting super stoned. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Right now, Dadgrass is offering probably podcast listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash probably. That's dadgrass.com slash probably for 20% off your first order. So I was on the plane and James, you already know the story, but I was on the plane ride from, um, from London to Cape town, which was an overnight flight, which was 12 and a half hours, 13 hours. Brutal, right? I'm in business class. I so brutal in business class. No, oh God, you, oh God. Oh, you had to, you had to lie down and okay, you our, had to put your seat down and you point. had a pillow to put your head on. Babe, that's oh. not the point I'm making. You know what? Shush, shush, shush. I was literally coming to say, I'm in business class, so it's not as brutal. God, you gotta let me finish. Sorry, So, you're right. anyways, this whole point is that we do, we have a lay down bed, we have all this stuff, it's very cushy. You know, life is good in business. Brutal flight for 13 hours, unless you're in your business. Like, then you're just like literally flying in a hotel, it feels like, especially Virgin Atlantic was sick. It was so nice. So, anyways, all is good, all is right in the world. When I first get on the plane, I don't chat with people on planes. I don't care to do that. Like, that's just not my thing. I want to be left alone on airplanes. I am nice to the flight attendants. I'm nice to everyone around me. But, like, I don't want anyone striking up conversation with me on a plane. I'm sorry. That's just it. Except for Catherine. You do come in at the end of this. And I love you. And you would save me. But um, in general, like, I'm not like a chatty Kathy on a plane. You might not believe that, but I'm not. I put my headphones in. I'm good to go. But when we first got on the plane, there's such a long time before you, like, actually take off on these flights that, um, yeah, this, like, husband and wife were, like, sitting there and they mentioned something and I said something and we, like, made a casual small talk for a second, right? I could tell they were husband and wife. They are talking about traveling together. That was it. Bish bosh, as you would say. Boom, boom, done. Bish bash bosh. Bish bash bosh, done. Okay. The, for the rest of the 13 hours, I did what everyone else did. I ate, I watched movies, I slept, I took my melatonin too early and fell asleep a little too early, but it's fine. Um, anyways, I wake back up. We have two hours. They serve breakfast two hours before the flight lands, right? We are on this flight for 13 hours. The lady beside me, God bless her soul, great f- for you. She slept for a long time, like a long time. And she chose to not be woken up for breakfast. Totally an option, right? Other people can wake up for breakfast if they fucking want to, okay? That's the other option Here to wake that. up when breakfast is served after 11 hours Ad- admittedly flight. there have been times where i've skipped the breakfast <clears throat> part and i've had my eye mask on <clears throat> and i've been so cozy and i've been like why are these people speaking so loudly i'm trying to sleep but i do understand that it is for the majority of the plane time to eat so people are waking up so people are waking up people are turning their lights on people are doing all this stuff do you know what i'm doing I'm not doing that. I, I am I'm eating quietly. I am choosing to eat in the dark, which they had not had the overhead lights on yet. They'd only do that when you actually land. So I was eating in the dark, my breakfast. The guy came over, asked what I wanted to order. I said, like, the English breakfast. He said, okay, cool. He brings me my breakfast. He comes over at some point, and he says to me, the flight attendant, who's so nice, and again, I've only this entire time, the only time I've opened my mouth to speak on this flight is to tell a flight attendant, thank you. Tell a flight attendant, no, thank you. I'll have a wine. That is it. I have not made conversation, nothing. And there's a whole ass bar on the plane that you could sit in and talk. Maybe the lady thought I was at the bar the whole time. I don't fucking know. But this lady... Um, she was probably a bit uh, about our parents' age. Let's just call her Karen. <sighs> she can be fucking. She's, she's worse than a Karen, I think, because she's she's just mean. She was just mean. And so, anyways, all this being said, um, this lady, she she's the flight attendant comes over to me. The guy, he goes, "Do you want to turn your light on?" Because I was eating in the dark for her because I didn't want to turn my light on and disturb her while she was and sleeping. You, and to be fair, you are what I've noticed. You are very a very considerate person. Like you would actually go out of your way to eat in the dark to not wake anyone up 
I did. I mm. really was. So he walks over to me and says, do you want me to turn your light on? And I say, that's okay. No worries. And he goes, oh, he notices I'm almost done with my breakfast anyways. He says, you're almost done with your breakfast anyways. A little too late for that. And I say, yeah, a little too late for that. Um, thank you though. And he goes, okay, awesome. This lady sits up, out, arises out of her bed, pulls her eye mask on. Now we're in little pods in business class, right? She puts her arms on top of the like divider of the pods, leans over into my pod, gets her finger, points it in my face. Like this is again, someone our parents age and like, I just don't do well with like people in school. Like if a principal like yelled at me or a teacher yelled at me, I would always be so either embarrassed or upset that I would cry. And then I'd be more mad at myself for crying. Um, I just like really don't like when people speak to me like that. I just, it, it's always yeah, flustered, 100%. Me. flustered me to my core. I'm not the kind of person that's like, it, whatever done don't do well with it she put her finger in my face of course the flight attendant had already walked away or else i can't imagine he wouldn't have said something put her finger in my face and said can you please be quiet and then she added this Shh, with like her finger sorry if that was really loud in y'all's headphones put her finger to her mouth and said Shh, and shushed me and i, I was i was so oh, taken aback the shush is so bad and i don't and now even when i retell the story you guys i don't know if it comes across the way that it, it did it to me but she literally like leaned into my pod from hers came out of her seat pulled her eye mask up and said can you please be quiet and then shushed in my face and her fingers in my face and then she laid back down and i was so flustered all i could do and all i said was ma'am you can relax and that's honestly like so stupid and i fucking like blew it right and one of those occasions where an hour later oh you've, you've got the best comebacks so, ever but you're like oh, so why can't I, I say it yeah so i you're lucky i was in there babe I, if, I, if, that, I if, wish she you were. Had, if she had done that to me i obviously i'm not i'm not an aggressive person in, in the slightest but it was a similar story to when i flew out here and that man you know that man who was sat behind me and um he came onto the flight late he was like one of the last to come on board sorry to interrupt the story but this it's is okay. part of the same thing right these 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 People aggressive mean, annoying yeah. like angry flyers and he he goes to the flight attendant oh there's no room up here to put my bag so i was just eavesdropping because obviously that's all you do on plays there's not much else to do and then he he opens my suitcase thing up where my suitcase is and goes look at the size of this they're not bags should not be allowed this big on planes and i was like well it's been on about 30 planes and it's absolutely fine and it's in there and it fits and then he goes whose bag is this and i just looked at him and went it's mine sir and he goes your generation are so selfish oh my god and i just said to him well your generation is seen now see now sit down put your sleeping pills and off to bed okay well my anyway a little bit different um the lady said that i immediately my eyes well up i'm so mortified everyone's still sleeping slash enjoying their breakfast and i'm just having a catastrophic meltdown inside my own brain and i'm like ferociously typing to taylor and i'm like i don't know why i'm so upset i'm just like so she, how, how can she talk to me like that that was so mean it was so cruel so embarrassing she made me feel so small and i'm gonna tell you something and this is the part where i'm uh, like i'm not embarrassed to say it in front of you but i told you that story and then that was it right we continued our trip you guys i thought about that interaction for two days really for two days seriously and at one point i was even getting a massage and i couldn't stop thinking about what i would have said to her or how i could have approached it differently and then i thought to myself like you no one can speak to me like that like you can't talk to humans like that like i would say to her um i was gonna get it like i thought of all these things it doesn't matter now i'm not gonna repeat them to you guys all the stuff i thought about because at first it was like i would be mean back and then the next part i was like you know what i would educate her on how she can make people feel and how you shouldn't make people feel so small and like do you have daughters do you talk to your daughter yeah. like this like all these things ran through my mind and and it was it was a full two days it was to the point james where i had to tell myself you're in cape town with your boyfriend this is the most beautiful place you've ever been you're about to go on a safari this lady that you knew for 10 hours of your life you don't even know her name like you have got to let it go and that to be honest that says a lot about you as a person because things like that you know affect you because you because you care you're a very caring person i just and, feel and, so and you want good in the world right and i and don't so deeply it's a blessing and a curse because i feel I, yeah. so deeply and it's great in moments where it matters with your friends or when you want to be considerate towards someone but in little small nuances like that i wish i could just like be like oh it is what it is she's a miserable person but whatever you'd way rather a world be full of people like you than this lady and that the thing that i was thinking about the most is two things number one 
how many times has this lady been rude to people in her life and how many more people like you has she upset for a number of days afterwards well all i thought to to say to turn this into like a moment for the podcast is like you have no idea how how small something might be she might like you said she might do that all the time she you have no idea little things if you are someone in life who might be short-tempered or might not think twice about being rude to a stranger if they've bothered you or pissed you off like reach for the same thing at costco and you're like i was grabbing that or someone didn't say excuse me and you're like moo like anything like that like it can actually really deeply affect someone Ma- massively and I, and I think people don't think about that small enough when they things. do it and, and we all we all lose our temper we all get snappy sometimes especially when we're not in a good mood or something many bands happen or in a rush but I think it's so important to think about that through life and and to just go around no matter what you're feeling just be nice to people because also she could have said something to someone maybe who was going through like a really difficult time and maybe is on that flight to go to a funeral of oh like, my, I, like a friend, was, you know that that kind it's, of thing it's, it's, it's so it's, true yeah, it's I was horrid. going to have the most fabulous vacation and, and, and I'm sure it's a me thing and I know woe is me Kim people are dying but like I wanted to be completely honest with you that that like so ferociously upset me it really did and let me tell you there's a tiny bit of a silver lining because and there's a there's a small little jab this bitch got back honestly because um at the end of the flight Catherine god bless you Catherine, is a podcast listener and she comes up i mean at this point we are 15 minutes to landing so everyone is like tray tables up lights are on everyone's talking you have to be we're literally landing in 15 minutes right but um uh there's a little like seat at the end of my seat in business because that's where like your bed connects sorry if there's if you hear nature behind us oh, this no, I think bug. it's part of the experience it's nice it's <laughs> nice but okay so Catherine comes and she sits and well she was like hi was so nice so sweet looked so wonderful and beautiful and she was like um from she was from the UK and she was like I'm so sorry never be sorry and she was like I, I listen to the podcast, whatever, but I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> she was talking at a normal level at that point. I was talking so quiet. She was talking at a normal level because we were landing. And then I raised my octave a little bit because fuck you, lady. And then she raised her octave a little bit. And then I'm going to tell you by the end of the conversation, we were both like, no way. Oh, my God. It's so nice to meet Lots you. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, we were so good. We were honestly, Catherine and I, we were we were loud. The thing is, a part of me is always, the part of me thinks like, fuck that woman. She must be living a miserable life and maybe she has her own issues going on. But at the same time, a part of me is also like, maybe be empathetic to people like that because they might be going through a lot in their life. But then at the same time, if I was there, I would have messed her up with my words. Okay. And that's what you think in the moment. I wish I had had that moment. No, I'm good in the moment. But you're right too, because you know what? I I thought about it. I thought about it. I thought about it. And my i'm happy that my only backlash was that i got to be really loud and honestly i hope she was listening and realized that you know like listen we're, we're loving people that have have people in our lives that want to come up to us on a plane and say hello nice to meet you whatever so i'm a good person okay it's just so you know but that i'm happy that i didn't actually say because i had all these remember responses i thought of in my head i'm happy that i never actually said any of them because like you say and like i am really not lying i am a good person you never know what someone's going through and we don't know why she was going to Cape Town even though it looked like a nice vacation with her posh husband and it seems to me that she might just be a fucking cold-hearted bitch but you're a better person than me I would have I would have sat her down in her place I really well, I would. was gonna say something as I left, but you know what? The husband was also with her the whole time, so it would have been a little odd to like scold the wife when the husband was there. He'd be like, "What are you fucking talking about?" It was a whole thing. I'm glad I didn't do anything. Long story short, is Catherine, you brought like a light into my life in that moment that I truly was like just sad and upset. So thank you for that. The podcast always comes through in that moment. The podcast came through. So it does. But also nothing. now I now I understand why you want me flying home with you as backup. Yeah, now you, now you, I need you. That, can you imagine? I'm just picturing if this happens again on the way home, and some lady comes and shouts at you, and then suddenly I just arise from my seat with my <clears throat> steak in my fork and my red wine. <laughs> what did you say to my girlfriend? I'm picturing that, and I kind of like it. It's kind of hot. I will mess you Wait, up. we haven't even talked about the fact that James is shirtless. <laughs> yeah, well, when in South Africa. We were sitting by the pool. He was going to go for a different like, pool, and I was like... Often, yeah, how often are you like sitting doing podcasts topless? No, never. That's I'm all I'll for t- it. I'll, I'll take this opportunity. I, he said, do you want me to put a shirt on? And I said, live la vida loca, baby. a little bit chilly, though, but... Are you cold? No, I'm okay. Okay, when I landed, uh, James was lovely. He picked me up from the airport. It was 7.20 in the morning. I only probably slept like four hours on the flight, even though it was 13 hours. I was a bit hungover. Yes, they had had a big party because it was Friday and Saturday again, and then I landed on Sunday morning. He was a little late picking me up to the airport, but that's okay. And I get there, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. Since I've been traveling, and since I've really just been more I know exactly cultured, where this is going. 
I kind of always thought that jet lag isn't real and that if you get jet lag, you're just kind of tacky. You yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> I know. And I was like, in my I, head, I was like, I knew what was about to happen. You were going to play this. Like, I don't get jet lag and I feel fine. And I was like, every oh, time I go to London, you just wait. When I go to London, do I not get jet lagged? You're actually quite good. Okay. So I'm like, yeah, if you get jet lagged, you don't travel enough and you're just uncultured swine and it's kind of tacky. It's weird because you can't nap, but you can fall asleep at nighttime, even <clears> if it's not the time for you to fall asleep. Yeah. So, so... Anyways, I get to South Africa. I am jet lagged as a motherfucker. Like I am. Picture me tacky as hell. Girl didn't want to wake up from a nap. <laughs> I I have recounted my feelings and thoughts that jet lagged is, is not tacky, uncultured swine that just doesn't travel. Which literally I only started doing like three years ago. So lol. But like I yeah I was very jet lagged and I got back and you were so excited to see me and I was so excited to see you and I looked at you and I was like I'm like not well. And I, I was like, can we stop to get water? And you were like, yeah. And then I was like. Yeah, you were in a bad way. <clears throat> I was in a bad way. I was like, oh, something dramatic. Uh, you've, you've literally traveled business class across the world. I know. You kept bringing that up. I was like, you don't know what I've been through. Can you imagine if you flew economy? Um, I could. I could imagine it. <laughs> I could. That would I, be I, tough. I used to. That would be tough. It's a, th- those are long haul flights, though. They are, and to be honest, look, I, I, I mean. I Xanax. But not in like a, yeah. Not, not, not in. I think I would definitely fly, try and fly business. For a, for a flight like that, 100%. Small, like, I could do a six-hour flight in economy. I mean, my issue is my my legs are, like, six foot long, so my knees will be up someone's arsehole in front of me. Yeah, I don't... I, I really... I, this wasn't a poor me, I flew in business class thing. This was just me saying, like, I did, in fact, get so it's, it, it's a sensible executive business decision that you made. I agree. And I also booked the trip so far in advance that it really wasn't that crazy of a price. Yeah. Okay. So I landed. I was very jet-lagged, which is so tacky, and but... I guess, were you... Were, did you like the car, the Jeep... It's it's got character. I really like. He has this topless, just like everything else in his life, um, Jeep <laughs> okay. that he rented. It's like very retro, very old, which means there's a lot of like things that are, are wrong with it. <laughs> the seat belts don't the work. The seat belt works one in three rides. One in three rides. Yeah. Um, so that's okay though. Yolo. If, if this is the last time y'all see me. Yeah, I mean, if anywhere in the world a seat belt doesn't work, Cape Town would be it because yeah. they're pretty laxed here. Yeah. Not that you know. Then the roof doesn't pop cool, on. We haven't put the roof on that much. <clears throat> But no, you, and you're lucky as well because Angus and I had to do that because you know you've seen the weather turn here yeah, and it, it gets real cloudy and dewy and then all the seats get wet. But yeah. just one last thing on that because I did I did panic a little bit because I know you're a classy girl and I know you like nice things. Me, the like, country mouse, <laughs> <is> classy. <laughs> and, you, and you like traveling in style. And I did have a serious conversation with Angus to be like, is this is this car going to be suitable enough for Shannon? And then I was thinking, oh. how am I going to put the roof on by myself? Babe, the Jeep is cool. Yeah, the Jeep is. I really can see cool. you digging it. Babe, I grew up in the country. I think the Jeep is cool. I really do. I think it's perfect for Cape Town. I, I, the whole, I need you to help me hold the roof down while I latch it on. That, for me, I'm not really interested. Sure. Um, but it's great because we have a garage. So yeah. we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, good. Well, I'm uh, glad you like it. I love it. No, I'm... I probably, I'm not, won't, I probably won't rent it again because given that the seatbelts don't work is a slight issue. Yeah, that's a, that's jarring, but it's fine. I'm not I'm not that uppity, babe. No? No. Uh, what? I, I like the Jeep. The Jeep is cool. Okay. Have, I haven't complained one time. No. I don't like the seatbelts don't work. You did complain a little bit. About the seatbelts. Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on. Um, Taylor and I wa- were 12 hours apart. She was in Hawaii. So picture this. It's 8 a.m. in South Africa. It's 8 p.m. in That Hawaii. is mental. It's mental that the world works like that. <clears throat> like- and she'd be like, she'd be like, good morning. I'd be like, good night. Or I'd be like, I'm heading to dinner. And she'd be like, I'm grabbing a coffee. Like, but imagine, okay, imagine being in a relationship like that, though. That would be hard. No, I couldn't imagine, do that. Oh, it'd be a nightmare. No, I really couldn't do that because Taylor and I had probably two hours and got just kids and I was here with you. Like, we didn't even talk, I feel like, for a week and a half because it was literally 12 hours. 12 hours apart is just not doable. You you, you can't do that. Yeah, you have a, a couple of hours window. I don't know if, if someone does do that that's in a relationship and that's great, but, like, I personally don't think I could do that. No, it'd be hard. Um, even with FaceTime. Okay, big first night out. I got here. We went out. Sundays are big in Cape Town. Yeah, everyone's like, out on Sundays. Okay, so I figured out no one in Cape Town works on a Monday or a Friday. They work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Basically, Cape Town's not really an area you come to do like loads of work. Like As in, you wouldn't come here to work for a company and get loads of work done, okay. right? It's not a competitive city, I guess, in that respect. No disrespect to all Cape Tonians. It's a great city. But Cape not Tonians? I think that's what you call them. Okay. Might have just made that up, but... Sundays are huge. Sunday's the biggest night of the whole week. It was litty titties. It was it was litty. It was and insane. And I kind of rate it, kind of. Rate means you like it. I like it because because do you know why I like it because I would never 
ever go out on a Sunday night usually because I'm always like, you know, Monday motivation. I've got to wake up and be fresh for my clients. We know you're Tony Robbins up. shit. We got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> so like waking up. So like it goes, is everything against my body on a Sunday night to be like <laughs> drinking tequila and absolutely partying and it's like 1 a.m. But, but out here, like, out here, it feels like every day is a, yeah. a, a party day. I agree. And we haven't, I haven't really I'm a little it. worried that this whole episode is just going to be half of your face, but I love the way you're staring at me so intently. Really it is going to be half my face, but it's just easier for me it's to really look at you. S- it's it's more like interesting his, than the GoPro. Yeah, I like the stare. Yeah. It's sultry. Um, okay, okay, so big first night out. And then, so I overlapped. A lot of people thought that Angus, his best mate, they were here for two weeks together first. A lot of people thought that he was staying here and it was going to be us three the whole time. A thruple. A thruple. Um, and but I, no. think, I think when we got massages and stuff at that hotel, people thought we were a thruple. Perfect. Yeah. Did you know that movie with Blake Lively? Yeah. Wait, what? Oh my god, we have to watch it. I forget the name of it, but it's like so cool and sexy. Not what? that I would ever do that with you and Angus, but it's a cool, it's like a bank robbery movie. What is the name of it? I'll have to figure it out. Oh, I think I've seen it. Blake Lively is just so hot though. They're like drug lords, mules, something. The one with Daniel Craig? Yes. No, I don't know. Layer Cake. What? No. You haven't seen any movies. There's probably some random one that like no one's ever seen. No, no, no. Everyone's seen Shannon has seen zero movies. I have. She hasn't even seen The Matrix. No. Haven't seen tons of movies. I should have seen. Um, okay, so so he left the day after I got here. So we we overlapped that one big last hurrah the Sunday night, and then James and I. It was safari time. Now let me tell you something. As you know, if you're listening to this podcast and you listen to the episode of me preparing to come here, I was a little apprehensive about the safari. I was at one point I felt like a little bit of a brat because he planned it and paid for it and did all this sweet stuff for my birthday. And at one point I did say to him like, James, like is are we sure this isn't something that you want to do for your birthday? Are we thinking like Shannon and what she'd want to do for her birthday? And you were like, I'm not a moron. Like I'm not putting yourself in some tent. It's not that kind of safari. Like I, I know what you like. And I was like, Oh, okay. Perfect. Now I seem like an asshole, but I was just a little worried. I didn't know because the safaris, I always see people go on safaris and they're on in the big old cool GP Jeeps. Right. This one was specifically a horseback riding safari which i was also a little nervous about because i haven't ridden horses since i was really young you hadn't ridden horses since you were really young and they basically say on the website last yeah last time i was on a horse i had to jump off it why because it was galloping okay and i couldn't control it and the only way out was to jump Jump. off okay scary so you can imagine me going into this yeah so we get there immediately immediately so we, we have a flight to joburg johannesburg and then we take uh a lovely transfer uh, picks us up and we go for three hours to Waterberg and we stayed at what this magnificent place called Ant's Nest or Ant's Hill. It was insane. And by the way, I actually, it was one of those things. I was a little bit apprehensive about it as well because it's not something that I'd done before or booked before and I never heard of it. And it was actually one of my followers who suggested it. And so then I went to look it up and I thought, wow, what a wonderful idea. This is so different. So I was also taking a little bit of a risk booking it because imagine if we turned up and it had been absolutely shit, then I would have been like, oh my God, this is the worst present ever. Shannon's never going to trust me to book a trip again. Aww. You know, all that stuff was going through my head. Okay. So I was also kind of like, and also because I booked it for your birthday, you know, when you book something like that and you don't know, you're just praying that everything's going to be okay yeah. and like it's all going to go well and go mm-hmm. smoothly. And that was also racing through my mind because, you know. I didn't know all this was happening in your brain. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, so you were a little nervous too. I also, ha- you know, I sometimes have feelings. You always have feelings. I just didn't know. I thought you were just like, it's going to go I, great. I sometimes think about you've things. S- <laughs> you've safaried so many times that I just thought that you were like, oh, she doesn't know. It's going to be great. I mean, I knew it was going to be, I, I, I knew it was going to be like, okay, because it came recommended and it had great reviews. Okay. I just didn't know if it was your cup of tea. It, well, it ended up being my cup of fucking tea. I'd love to go back a hundred times. Let's start from the beginning. So we get there. Um, it's a very communal vibe. So we stayed at Ant's Nest specifically. There's two different locations on the reserve. There's one area called Ant's Nest. It's like more of a, like I said, communal family vibe because all the rooms are positioned like very near each other. And then there's this other part that we were lucky enough to stay in called Ant's Hill, which is much more like you have your own lodge, you have your own pool at some of the lodges, like, and you basically like eat with people, like you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with people. Maybe you go horseback riding with them, but otherwise you're like very kind of like, I would say it's the isolated. more luxurious part of the whole place. Yeah, you can exp- and I'm so glad we got to experience both. Because, like, luckily enough, we stayed an extra day. Um, James and I got to know the owner of the property, Aunt. His name is Aunt, actually, short for Anthony. And um, it was 
incredible and they shared a lot of common interests with rugby you should see Ant. you can i'll, I'll post a picture of him but he, he's like this big old you can tell like big south african guy big south african yeah. guy that 100 percent used to play rugby you could tell and so james and him bonded over that and so they we ended up staying an extra day which is why our room we room wasn't available for an extra day so we stayed at the hill so all this we said we experienced both properties and it's just so cool but let's talk about the horse riding experience i said on my instagram i go it's so cool you can get so close to the animals on horseback because the animals so like the giraffe the zebra the rhinos the animals don't see you the human they just see the horse and everyone's like what do you mean they don't see the humans but like this is actually what happens they genuinely and and you think like don't they smell us? Can't they hear us? And no, like the animals just see the horseback. They just think it, the guides explained it as like, they just think it's a funny horse. They think it's a yeah. funny looking horse. But then there aren't where these so horseback safaris are. There aren't things like lions and predators like oh, that. Yeah. Because obviously if you're on a horse and a lion sees you and you go near it, the li- the chances are the lion will likely attack the horse, right? It's it's mainly animals that probably wouldn't attack you. But that said, there are buffaloes there. They're the most aggressive animal in the in the world. In the world. No, that's what he said, the buffalo, the most oh, yeah. the most aggressive. So they'll come for you. Like rather you know, lions aren't that aggressive. They'd rather they'd rather oh, they only kill things if they know they're gonna kill it, if that makes sense. Okay. Buffaloes will just charge you if they're well, frisky. The rhinos we got very close to. One did eventually kind of like woof, like uh, a. Yeah, you, what would you, you say? shat your pants. Yeah, well, my horse went to gallop off. I know. We ended up being really good horseback riders. Like James and I, at first, we were both. You were definitely a lot more comfortable right off the bat. I got on top of the horse and was like, whoa. Like me and my childhood best friend, Drew, she grew up, I've already said this, but like she grew up on a horse farm, like did rodeo. I rode horses with her. I did a couple of trail rides growing up with my friend Josie and the Yarborough's. And like I did it, but like when I was so young. Yeah. I got back on the horse and I was like, yo, this is high up. Like I was like, I forget how like, I think, high you know what I think? I think your horse, you had a horse called Alex, your horse, all the horses, <laughs> all the horses had the most exotic names. His was Mzambi. The other ones were like Mzanza. Kiaki, Riafa, Rafa. Mine was Alex. But you, you, My horse's name was Alex. <laughs> but that, that little bit of nervousness, which is natural, right? I have a cousin named Alex. Alex knew you and you were nervous at the beginning, and he animals didn't forget. Know. He didn't forget for the rest of the trip because he was playing games with you. Uh, listen, animals know, and one hundred percent horses be knowing. And yeah, that was for sure a thing because I was definitely hesitant at first. They don't really like because I said I rode horses a lot growing up, and you did too. They weren't like this. Is how you hold the reins? I'm like, I forgot that shit. Well, I also said I played polo because I did with my friend when I was about twelve. Uh, very different but I started convincing myself before I even got on the horse that I was a good rider okay that's good and and in my head I'm thinking what's the worst that can happen I'm either gonna fall off which I've done before that was my last experience on a horse or if an animal charges me and kills me that's an okay way to go I think okay me personally not how I want to go out but okay teach their own I will say I had to tell myself because I know animals can sense this I was like bitch you're acting nervous he he, like stop because I didn't know how to hold the reins and I wasn't sure anyways I was very nervous for the first probably 10 minutes and then the craziest thing happened I just got comfortable Mm -hmm. like I just was like you you know what I told myself I said bitch you're in front of your boyfriend like you are not about to be like like, I can't do it I can't do it like I was like I'm not doing that so I was like buck up literally (laughs) knock if you buck and fucking ride this horse. You've ridden so many. Because I did. Listen, I literally grew up. That's not like a faff. Like, I literally grew up riding horses. In my childhood, I rode horses all the time. All the time, okay? Like, full on trail rides and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, I know you don't, you don't have to dive fucking deep, you know, dive deep into your little Prada bag you just got three years ago. And I remember that you used to be a real fucking country mouse and you got to ride this horse. And then I just got so comfortable. And by the next, that day, that same first day we were trotting. And then it was kind of weird. The, tr- weird. Oh, the trotting. Oh my She's God. My, my, not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily my balls. They were okay. Cause I sort of packed them up to the front, okay. but it was more just like the, the skin, it's the skin like underneath Chafing. your bum, but like on your thigh that basically never ever gets any light of day and is so sensitive. And then you get on this horse and they make you trot first before you can canter, but trotting is so much more uncomfortable. And I'm a, I'm a heavy guy, I weigh 100 kg, like 220 so pounds, right? And I'm coming up and down on this so horse. So trotting is like this, imagine this, My if you're if you're listening, it's like, to do, to do, to do. So you keep no, going, no, 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 it's not, no, 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 no,
Yeah, it's like do 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 up, do. Down, so you're up, up down, down, up down, up down. down. But when you're cantering, the funny thing is, I saw when you were first shotting, you were just going. <laughs> oh, I know. I didn't. I didn't remember. It's like, oh, you must be in a lot of pain. I you're know. like you're going opposite direction. I just went like this. Momentum, yeah. And you're supposed to go up, 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 up. And then you know, all I had to do was look around and realize that I was not fucking doing the same thing they were doing. And then it hit me. I was like, oh yeah, this is how you trot. But then when you canter, oh, which is run, is cool. which James and I literally started doing the next day, which is great. So like then for the next, it's so like cool to be going through these, like this reserve with all these amazing animals, zebras, giraffes, and you're just like fucking getting it on this horse. Like yeah. that's exhilarating. Yeah. I was like, I don't know if I can go back to like the drives. Like, and they would be like, do you want to go for a drive today? And we're like, no, we want to go on the horses. Like it's cool. I thought it was a really cool experience. I was very happy with how I adjusted to the horses, even though. Alex definitely like got my fucking number and knew. you almost you almost had your horse roll in the water. Oh my god, he was he was on some shit. He, the the guide he knew. Was like, That's why he knew that first ten minutes. He knew you were being a little bitch. Well, the guide was like, pull him out, pull him out, and I was like, he's taking a drink of water. He's like, he's about to roll. He's about to roll. Keep my my like my feet are in the stirrups. If this horse gets in the water and rolls, like if I can't pull my feet out of the stirrups fast enough and hop away, which who knows if I could or couldn't, like that horse is rolling on me in the water. They don't give a fuck. So I was like, ah, I was like, Alex, Alex. I was like, whoa, Alex. I'm like yanking. Also, like, just like doesn't feel that badass to be yelling Alex. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, zombie, mm, zombie, back, whoa. Get his name right. It was, it was. Alex. Uh, no, no, my oh, horse's yours. name. He can hear you. What? I have a good bond with him. It was called Mzanze. 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 Okay, sorry. Yeah. Not really, though. Yeah, get it right. Okay. Anyways, I have a cousin named Alex, so it really fucked me the whole time. <laughs> I was just like. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we thought that was like the coolest thing ever. I admittedly, I was actually very impressed because there were three occasions where Alex was messing around and all three occasions you managed to keep it in. So well done you. Thank that you was for the good. compliment. That was good. I. Is that a goat? A no, bird? I, I think they're birds. A cat? Could be anything out here. Everything makes weird noises out here. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. So I'm going to have another part. Well, you're going to listen to this this week, and then next week you're going to have a Get to Know Me, which was filmed back in Nashville. And then the week after that, this isn't a part one, part two, because we're going to close it out with basically after the safari, we came back here. Um, and we've only been here for a day. So we're going to – the next bit of the podcast will be our whole entire experience in Cape Town because I was only actually in Cape Town for – a day and a half before we went on safari so this was our recap of the safari um also i'm just like dreadfully dreadfully fucking nervous that this load shedding and the power outages and everything like this audio is just gonna go to shit and there's not enough time in the gopro and it's getting dark i'm just stressed out but is there anything else you'd like to say oh oh i have a question sorry i have add i think <laughs> um no <coughs> no not me no not, no, you. not me um okay question what has it been like spending so much time with me? Because we've been together for the longest. Yeah. And we w- this will be the longest trip. We'll be, be together for a full month. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I honestly have never, and I'm not just saying this for the clout, but like clout. I, I've, never, I've never spent this much time with, a, with another person, like a, a partner, female, as I have with you. And initially I did have my sort of, reserves about it but totally i think i did too i think it's been it's been great and i think we've managed to coexist very well together there, there's been like one or two times where because also i'm someone who likes his own space as well yeah. and i know you do too and i like sometimes just doing things independently and particularly when i'm working like not having any distractions like you getting a spray tan naked in the fucking foyer of the house that just happened wait i, I didn't get spray tan for two weeks i need to put that on record i didn't get spray tan for two weeks and everyone was wondering i did not know that you that they just come to your house and you're just standing like butt naked and they're just spraying your vagina well you can choose to wear underwear i just choose not to <laughs> yeah and i was just like okay and you were cackling <laughs> away so like but that's fine because like i'm a chill guy so I think like overall it's been great. We we are literally doing everything together and I think most in most occasions I would have wanted to rip the other person's head off by now, but it's been good. But having said that, and we can talk about this at dinner. I well, I'm scared. I, 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 I think it's good like, you know, me popping off to get a little lid trim today, haircut and uh and, and you know, and then like I, you, you going to the shops to go shopping, like 'cause and then like when when we we're both very good at doing work by ourselves and then you come and you say, I wanna cuddle or like you Babe, know. I, I truly when I went shopping by myself, I thought to myself, I'm so glad James isn't here. Like I don't yeah. like shopping with men because I 
me, I feel empathy for everyone in my life. And I just know, I, I, I don't end up shopping the way I want to shop because if I want to try something on, I'm like, no, because he's bored. Or if I want to look at something longer, I'm like, he's bored. So I love doing that by myself. I think it's good that even though like we're abroad, it's always like holiday mode. I think it's good that, that we do amazing things together and you know we go for really nice dinners and when we are there we're talking to each other and that that i love and then i also think it's good that we have these like periods of the day where we are just doing our own thing so we feel he like he works a lot like he like he is so 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 really serious with his clients like you're you're leaving the messages you're checking up on them you're you're checking on their plans you're calling your employees you have a zillion he's like anna grace i swear to god he has like a trillion <laughs> zoom calls a day it's the craziest thing couldn't be fucking me okay and you know what I like to do? I like to go into the room. I like to maybe just look at TikTok a little bit. I like to maybe just, I do, then I do some work. Then I do some work. But America's not really up yet. So I kind of like to just like lay and then he'll like come in the room and be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, working. <laughs> but like, let me tell you something. Let me tell you where I don't want to be while you're working. Fucking there. No, not, agreed, I don't. Agreed. I wouldn't want you there either. So it's great. I, I'm not someone who's like, what are you doing? What do you have to? I think the time where I lost it a little bit was was in the safari place where the Wi-Fi wasn't great in my room. I, I left the room so I'm just going to go do some work up by the thing because I was editing a video. And then you literally came, sat opposite me and were playing stuff on your Instagram going, baby, baby, look at this, look at this, look at this. And then, baby, baby, listen to this, listen to this. I'm trying to edit a video. You are then you then FaceTime your mum or dad and you're like, like they talking to them on FaceTime. I'm trying to, I know they did, but I'm trying to work. And then I just got up and like, where's the thing? I'll be like, I just need you. a bit. I just need I'll a bit, tell you, I'll quiet. tell you why I came up there. Do you know why I came up there? Because the fucking Wi-Fi wasn't working like That's you said. That's why I came up there in the first place. Well, I need Wi-Fi But it was too. a big safari lodge. You could have sat the other fucking side of the room. I knew you i wanted to sit by you there are other people there you can still know me and sit on the other side of the room (laughs) yeah i'll tell you what i picked up on that i was like he's annoyed (laughs) but he i was about to be like you know what i'm gonna leave i'm gonna he can tell i can tell he's annoyed so i'm gonna leave but you left first so yeah because you yeah you know okay okay well i didn't do that okay so i'm glad to know that we're do well and then i'm gonna just end this talking about the spray tans really quick you guys i um, so you'll hear this in the next episode in the get to know me. Um, it was like a question about my insecurities and I, I kind of w- delved a little bit deeper into like, I think I never really noticed how insecure I am about my skin. And, uh, just the fact that like, I'm always tan. I, I pride myself on getting the best spray tans on how to spray tan myself. I'm going to make the, you know, subscription videos for you guys to show you. I love that I have this at my fingertips, but at the end of the day, uh, my spray tan wore off by the time we went to the safari. It had been a week. I got a great spray tan in New York, but yeah, it had been a week. So it wore off. And I was like, I am not about to respray tan myself before the safari. First of all, I would look crazy. I'm in a fucking safari on horseback. Second of all, I'm sweating. There's all this stuff. There's not AC there. Like, it's just ridiculous. You don't need to do that. <clears throat> so I was okay with that. Then we got back here to Cape Town, which was like luxurious and beautiful and amazing. And I kind of just like still didn't spray tan. And I went like a full four days i got a spray tan literally today as we just heard i was butt ass naked chatting away to the spray tan artist the mobile spray tan artist in cape town was fantastic it's called go brown it's great um but yeah i am very proud of myself because i like got dressed up and went to dinners and like that's just like not something i do when i don't have a spray tan i'm like if i don't have a spray tan then i'm just staying inside like i'm just my makeup doesn't match my i I look ugly like i just convinced myself that without a spray tan i literally look hideous like my legs are pale everything's pale you you are blending in with the with the walls here Thank you so much for helping me with my insecurities. This is very <laughs> helpful. Um, no, you said a million times that you really thought I was. No, I did. I sorry. I was just laughing at the fact that this <clears throat> this this random woman was just spraying your vagina while asking you how your podcast is doing. She wasn't <laughs> only spraying my vagina. That's actually the only part she wasn't spraying of me. But you know, Taylor is a massive, massive proponent of me not having spray tans. And here's the thing: I'm not going to do anything that anyone else tells me to do until I want to do it. And I got a spray tan today because I want to be nice and bronze in the summertime in Cape Town and feel good for this weekend. But I feel like it was a big progression for me. I was, I, I felt for the first time ever, I still felt pretty without a spray tan. And I was very proud of myself, even though I was sitting next to you and you were literally the tannest human being I've ever seen in my life. But I still felt pretty and that was a big deal for me. It's hard. We are constantly comparing or I am constantly comparing myself. I know we all are. And once you've seen yourself at peak, once you've seen yourself with all these things in 2022 that we can do, spray tan slashes, Mm -hmm. like we can overline our lips, we can get lip filler, we can do whatever we want to ourselves to make ourselves look stunning. And you strip it all away and then you're just like, you have all these existing photos online and you're like, I don't want someone to see me and think I don't look like that. I get I, that. You know, it's, it's hard, but I will say for the first time ever, I realized that like, 
it's kind of all in my head. Like no one didn't think I wasn't pretty. Like I, I still got nice compliments when I didn't have my spray tan. Like all this to be said, I just think I, this was progression for me. I'm keeping you guys up to date and along with my journey. Um, it is, it's ever evolving. And I, I love to get on here and talk about how I fucking love spray tans. And yes, spray tan forever. I'm not going anywhere without my spray tan machine, which I brought my spray tan machine here and made it. I even brought a fucking voltage converter. And then there's a straw to the fucking spray tan machine that wasn't, couldn't be found or located. So we had to throw the spray tan machine away. All this being said, I know that I've said that a thousand times. I'm happy with my baby steps that I'm taking to be okay, a little bit more natural. And I will try. Taylor employs me to be less spray tanned. And she was right about the lashes whenever she told me to get rid of those. And I look way better without them. However, she's a fucking Hawaiian tan little bitch and you're tan too. So it's easy for you guys to say like natural's best. It's like no fucking shit. You guys are <laughs> No, stunning. but I also love you with a spray tan. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think you, the, the spray tan's good. Yeah. I look great in a yeah. spray tan. Fabulous. Yeah. Let's go get pizza. I'm just saying you don't want to be the, you know, you don't want to be the girl. The girl has to rely on it. Exactly. I, I don't want to have to rely on that. I, I'm really, I know we're almost done. We're wrapping this up. I don't want to be the girl that has to rely on these things in life. I want to be happy both ways. So I'm really proud of myself for the baby step of, of living spray tan free for a week. But I personally, on a, on a me, on a Shannon journey, I'm trying to be okay. And you guys on Instagram were so kind being like, I love your natural skin. I was, I would say I'm not fishing, but I was fishing a little bit whenever I posted that I haven't gotten a spray tan. So thank you guys for, you know, piping me up, making me feel good. Um, it's getting dark here. I don't know if this audio is fucking recording. I'm scared. Courtney's probably going to kill me. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this probably podcast. There will be another one at the end of this trip, at the end of the journey. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.